Aloha, everyone. Welcome. This CME activity is jointly provided by the Queens Medical Center and UH Jobson Department of Geriatric Medicine. We offer free continuing education for this series to receive a CME or CEU. Participants must complete the online evaluation at the end of the webinar. Your comments are very important to the planning committee and will be used to plan future programs. Um, so about ECHO, we want to remind everyone that this is an ECHO webinar, which means that this session serves as a forum for mutual teaching and learning from experts and from each, each of us on the front lines. Um, as the ECHO model goes, all teach, all learn. So it will take all of you to create this community of learning. In the spirit of Aloha, we encourage you to turn on your cameras to help us build a community of learning. Uh, feel free to eat during this echo session. Good nutrition is key to a healthy lifestyle. Um, as a reminder, uh, evaluations are required for the C, uh, for C, CMEs. You can find evaluations uh, by following the link in the chat um, or at any time on the website. Um, certificates of attendance are also provided for care home staff. Uh, this ECHO webinar is a forum for mutual teaching and learning from experts and each of us on the front lines. Oh, I read this already. As the ECHO model goes, all teach, all learn in the spirit of Aloha, we encourage you to turn on your cameras. Um, our ECHO webinar format consists of the following, a short lecture from our presenter, open comments from the expertise of the ECHO Hub team, attendees comments, question, and examples of case discussions. Um, additionally, we invite you to share any geriatric cases. Lastly, please keep case discussions HIPAA compliant. This includes not sharing the patient's name, birthdays, addresses, any personal information. Uh, we learn best from our patients and our clients. They are our best teachers. Okay. So, our interdisciplinary team is here as well. We are all willing to teach and share collective wisdom with you. Most of you, um, I'm Brittany Pacheco. For those that don't know me, I'm the health coordination manager for Big Island and Kauai and the LTSS coordinator at Aloha Care. Uh, we have one at Gaylord, president of Alliance of Residential Care Administrators. We have Mary Bell Tan, president of Foster Family Homes Association. Elsa Talavera, President and CEO of All Island Case Management Incorporation. Uh, we have Leila Ventar, Health Coordination Manager from United Healthcare, uh, Kauai County, and Dr. Rita Bell Fernandez from the University of Hawaii. All right. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce our distinguished speaker, Janice Petsuko Kang. Uh, Janice is a highly experienced clinical speech language pathologist with a career spanning over 30 years. She holds a Master of Arts in Speech Language Pathology from Ohio University. Uh, she has held leader leadership positions, including her current role as lead speech language pathologist at PT Works Hawaii. Uh, throughout her extensive career, Janice has provided specialized communication and swallowing services to pediatric and adult populations across various healthcare settings. Her program development and rehabilitation expertise has greatly impacted patient care in Hawaii and beyond. Um, today, Janice will be sharing with us her deep knowledge and expertise in adult communication and swallowing disorders providing valuable insight for all healthcare professionals. So if we could please give a warm welcome to Janice and I will hand it over to you. Aloha and mahalo for coming today as we talk about speech therapy for cognitive persons with cognitive impairment. Excuse me, we're gonna put the screen. Which one? I you see the green share screen. The green oh, share screen. Yeah. Yes. And then select your PowerPoint. Oh, sorry about that. Thank you. 
Okay. Thank you. Yes. Aloha and mahalo for coming today as we talk about speech therapy persons with cognitive impairment. The speech language uh, goal would be to be heard and understood by others and to effectively communicate via verbal and or nonverbal means, utilizing compensatory communication strategies for increased socialization with others. Speech language pathologists, under the umbrella of speech and communication, there is speech, voice, language, and cognition, which is a very important part of what we'll talk about today. Under the positivity, it's something that I have uh, interjected with the residents to help think positively and to, you know, have that feeling of feeling smart and empowered during our daily activities. Exercises for oral motor strengthening. Oral motor exercises help to strengthen and uplift our mouth muscles or improve speech and safe swallowing skills. Saying these vowels with wide mouth movements helps to exercise our oral muscles. So some simple vowel productions are open your mouth wide and say ah, spread your lips and say e, round your lips and say oo, open your mouth wide and say a, round your lips and say o. Oh. So vowel and consonant exercises help to exercise the oral muscles and speaking at a low pitch helps to improve vocal quality and resonance. To find your comfortable low pitch level, you saying the O words helps to find that location where you can speak comfortably at a very good level. Say, oh, hello, how low can I go? Very low, way to go. Ho, 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 aloha and mahalo. So saying the O words helps to find that really great level where you can speak at a longer period in a comfortable level. For speech recovery goals, these are some basic speech, clear speech techniques to enhance vocal communication. Breathe deeply, pronouncing each syllable using wide mouth movements at a low pitch level, slows automatically slows rate for clear speech. Deep breathing is very important in our speaking, and it's a good warm up with a deep breathing exercise to promote relaxation. So you take a deep breath in through the nose, and then slowly blow the air out through the mouth. A prolonged exhalation, sitting or standing with elbows slightly back. Again, inhale a deep breath. Hold your breath and then exhale. With speaking, you would breathe deep and then on the exhalation to turn on your voice immediately. So getting that good buildup of air inhalation through your nose. And as soon as you are gonna release the air, that's when you turn your voice on. And that helps to have stronger vocal projection and volume. Hi, my name is Janice Kong. So it's speaking right on that exhale as soon as you release the air for that added volume. Nonverbal communication with 
body language, it's a big part of our communication. And body language would be our physical behaviors in instead of using words, how our posture, our body posture, our use of gestures, eye con eye movement, eye contact. It's important to for us to realize that body language is a big part of our communication. Some dementia communication uh, observations are it is much it, um, body language matters as much as words. So as we talked about facial expressions, tone of voice, time, touch, and tenderness. Approaching them in a gentle fashion is very important as we work with residents with communication and cognitive impairment. When approaching a person with dementia and starting a conversation, come from the front and identify yourself, keeping good eye contact. If the person is seated or reclined, go down to that level. Call the person by their preferred name to get his or her attention. Use short, simple phrases and repeat information as needed. Ask one question at a time. Speak slowly and clearly. Use a gentle and relaxed tone. Patiently wait for a response. Use of diverse means of communication. There are many modalities for communicating, reading, writing, drawing, pictures, speaking, gestures, and singing are great ways of various modalities of communication. Some gestures, counting with the fingers, high five, shaka, peace, peace sign, fist bumps, and pointing to desired items. Also head nods for yes responses, head shakes for no responses. Also eye blinks are helpful in communicating also. Singing is a wonderful means of improving one's speech. And it helps also with the flow. Singing allows familiar words to flow from our long-term memory and helps to increase speech fluency. Singing favorite tunes can help to recall, help to recall uh, the recall of lyrics. Positive affirmations. This has been a helpful tool in practicing the residents' increased speech clarity as well as vocal volume and projection. So reciting positive, the key thing is the positive vocal affirmations to build their confidence and practice clear, uplifting speech with increased volume. And some of these positive affirmations were you are doing the best you can. It is okay to ask for help. You are worthy and enough. It is okay to be not okay. Your boundaries are important. You're capable of amazing things. Your feelings are valid. It's okay if you are a work in progress and it is okay to allow yourself to heal. ABCs of positivity. It's a great speech exercise, thinking of positive words from A through Z. I am amazing. I am awesome. I am brave. I am brilliant. I am cheerful. I am courageous. 
breaking down the tasks of daily living skills using some sequence cards that you create well, is a helpful tool to going over the step-by-step -step processes of the daily activities. You, print, you could print, laminate, and place these cards on a ring. Everyday tasks. Planning is a skill we use to carry out everyday activities. And writing step-by-step -step instructions on a task such as taking a bath or shower is a helpful tool in the sequencing of events. Providing choices. It's helpful to ask simple questions, such as asking yes, no questions, presenting two options to choose from so the individual can easily indicate their desired choices. It's important um, that the patient feels successful in being able to answer and respond to the questions. With some of the open-ended questions, it might be difficult for the per individual to answer. So keeping things simple and direct is very helpful in the providing of choices and questions. With the verbal hierarchy, there are different stages of the speech and verbal communication, starting with sounds, vowel productions, syllables, words, phrases, sentences, structured conversation, and the highest level being spontaneous conversation. And reminiscing is part of that discussion and recall of happy events and people and events and occasions. So reminiscence therapy is very helpful with the recall of happy memories, use of pictures of family, friends, and happy occasions as a great conversational tool. That's very helpful in the reminiscing and talking about the, their story. Everyone has their journey and it's a wonderful thing to talk about and helpful in the recall of happy occasions. In the home environment, some helpful tools are a wall clock on the home and also a wearing a watch with big numbers for orientation to time. Written reminders around the house to, important, to remember important things. Having a container to place important objects or belongings Keys, like keys or the wallet, purse in a familiar location so they can recall that location each time. A wrist coil keychain with the keys, important keys that a person can wear wherever they go so as not to lose them and to keep them handy and accessible. Using a pillbox with days of week, a.m. and p.m., for daily medication management is also a helpful tool. Using a calendar for orientation to date and to record important appointments and upcoming events. Creating things to do lists and shopping lists to check off items after completion. Create a list of the names of close family and friends for rehearsing names, having a list of important emergency contacts and their phone numbers for ready reference, a memory notebook to record important information, daily activities and jotting thoughts for later recall, having a memory notebook such as a journal book or a binder and putting important uh, Exercises for therapies can be helpful so they can practice it as a home program. Uh, keeping a small notebook and pen in pocket or in purse to write notes to recall at a later time. So just having some helpful tools to help with our memory 
and later recall of important information is helpful. But when in doubt, um, it is helpful to re recommend a ST evaluation. And so thank you very much for your time today and for coming. I really appreciate it being here today. Thank you, Janice. That was great. Does anybody have questions for Janice? No questions. All right. Thank you so much, Janice, for sharing all that information with us. It's very informal. Thank you so much. Thank you. We got all the thank yous coming into the chat. Mm -hmm. And thank you everybody for joining. Um, please don't forget to fill out the evaluations so that you guys can also get your CMEs. Uh, Janice, this is doctor. Could you share a story of us for us of patients you have worked with at, a, at your clinic at PT Works and how you have helped cases with any dementia cases? Oh, yes. Um. One of my patients that had um, difficulty with his memory, we created a memory notebook and we wrote down names of his family. Uh, we wrote down the therapist names and we put the exercises for each discipline in the folder. Also, he was supposed to use his walker to help reduce any falls and so he would have a sign on the wall, use your walker at all times. It would be all over the house. And um, that really helped though to help remind him. He also was uh, encouraged to drink water because part of that was the, you know, encouraging the hydration. So they, the physical therapist brought that up that maybe he was dehydrated, not drinking enough water. And that could be a thing that could, be increasing his fall risk because of that importance of keeping hydrated. So he had a cup that was designated to drink three cups a day, you know, which was a tall cup and he followed it well. So, and using just written reminders about safety tips and we would write it in his notebook and he followed it well. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing about the notebook. Oh, thank you. Janice, do you guys use singing a lot? Oh yes, yeah. singing is great. <laughs> it was it was neat they were singing God bless America and I, I forgot some of the words and to hear my patient, you know. <laughs> Singing it so resoundingly, it was very great. Plus, finding the words, sometimes it's hard to come up with the words for the resident. So by singing, somehow it bypasses part of the brain that, you know, helps with that fluency. So people can may stutter or really have difficulty speaking, but when they sing, it's totally fluent, and it really is a wonderful tool. And part of the singing too and speaking is speaking from the core. So you want to always take that deep breath and then upon the exhalation, come right in on the voice. And that will help to really project the voice in a good manner as well as vocal conservation. So that it's not yelling or shouting, but it's speaking from, as I say, talk from your tummy, 
you know, that's your core strength and that will be your power source for projecting your voice. But singing is a wonderful tool. Plus it also helps with the memory of the lyrics and they, you know, helps to encourage the increased memory skills. Yeah, I had a patient once, she had a difficult time communicating. She couldn't get her words out, but she could sing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she could sing her her Filipino songs. Yep. She used to sing and she could, oh, it was beautiful. But to communicate, it was difficult for her to get her words out. So I just thought it was interesting that she could sing a whole song to me. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. And you could do like sing your words, right? Put a little melody to the word. It could be any melody, but just to add that little melody to help it flow out a little easier. That's wonderful, Brittany. Yeah, Anybody our, have some stories to share? In our creativity workshop that we did in Samoa, the, uh, the creativity teacher would say to sing your name. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, you I wouldn't just say I'm Rita Bell. I would say Rita Bell. So <laughs> practice like singing that. your name. You can introduce Terrific. yourself in different ways. That is wonderful. Um, Philip said to check out Sing Along with Suzy Q on YouTube. It's great for the seniors. It's a great way to redirect uh, dementia clients, especially when they're agitated. Good tip, John, Philip. John, are you able to pull up that YouTube, what Philip is suggesting? Oh, hold on. Was that, was that put in the chat? Yeah, sing along with Susie Q on YouTube. <laughs> okay, let me try to find that. Um, and then Norma shared that, uh, explain, she said that it explains that her mom is 99 years old and could sing the Star Spangled Banner, not missing a word, <laughs> which she can't even sing herself. I don't think we any of us can sing that perfect ourselves, but that's awesome, Norma. Yay, that's terrific. <laughs> and her mom lives in Canada. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> let's see if john can get that um sing along with suzy q on youtube for us to see I do see one sing along involving uh, crossword puzzles. So I just bring that one up. Let's see. That might be the one, John. Okay, and there's another one. How much is that doggy in the window? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's a lot of songs here on the yeah. on the YouTube channel. Philip says they use sing along with Suzy Q in Arcadia. Oh okay. Let me see. Uh, Jocelyn, awesome. we sing You Are My Sunshine every yeah. morning with all my clients before they start their breakfast. I love that. Oh, oh. Yay, found it. Hello friends, my name is Susie Q. Welcome to the singing game. Let me tell you how it works. I'm going to sing a line of a popular song leaving out one word and your job is to fill in the missing word and we'll put it in the crossword puzzle. Then we'll all sing the song together. Doesn't that sound like fun? Let's get started.
Okay, number one down. Five letters. Here's how it goes. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's... It's an easy one, isn't it? When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's... Did you sing Amore? Of course, you are correct. <laughs> when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's Amore. <laughs> and there's also other it's a youtube channel so you would be able to you know use any of these videos yeah that was a great one to share yes thank you angel for sharing that So secure. John, could you show some more, please? We have a lot of time. All right, let me bring up one. Uh, well, yeah, Justin has some lined up. Got it. I'll go ahead and. God bless. America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies. White with I have a question, Janice, to make it more um, cult yeah. uh, in line with different cultures that we have here in Hawaii. Uh, mm -hmm. Could we use karaoke or could we use uh, like I'm Filipino? So would it be uh, doable to do it uh, like traditional Filipino songs uh, in karaoke? Oh, that would be wonderful. Um, I was just smiling because uh, uh, years ago, I used the karaoke as a great therapy. <laughs> After a stressful day, you have the karaoke room and you just sing your heart out. Mm -hmm. But it's wonderful. It is a great tool for um, speech and, and memory and just really helping with their speech, uh, speaking skills, speech, improving their speaking abilities also. Mm -hmm. Plus the intonation is great too, because um, speaking at varied intonation levels really helps to animate the speech and help, And singing is a great way to kind of work different ranges of pitches also with mm -hmm. their voice. Thank you. Yes, karaoke is a wonderful activity for the seniors. And mm -hmm. a lot of the facilities have that as an activity They have like a karaoke time where they can sing different tunes. And it's a very popular and very great social activity also. Mm -hmm. oh, God. God. Oh, What do you Come in. Well, 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 look who's here. I haven't seen you in many a year. <laughs> If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake, baked a cake, baked a cake. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. How'd you do? How'd you do? How'd you do? Had you dropped me a letter, I'd have hired a band, the grandest band in the land. Had you dropped me a letter, I'd have hired I have a question, Jess. I'm the one interrupting. Yes. Um, is it is it 
good to use songs that they're really familiar with? Or what about new songs that they might not have been exposed to before? It's great to probably start with the, the ones they are familiar with because that will just probably roll off their tongue, right? Um, it's just that familiarity or long-term memory that's really the better than like the short-term memory skills a lot of times. So starting with things that are familiar in words, um, names, it's it's a great start. And that helps them to feel successful to, you know, try starting new information learning new information and so yes uh, singing new songs would be great too and starting with the ones that they're familiar will help them feel very successful in their singing and coming up with the words so um thank you that yeah would that's be great really to hear great. doesn't matter grab a chair and fill your platter and dig 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 right in if i knew you were coming I'd have baked a cake, hired a band, for goodness sake. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. How'd you do, how'd you do, how'd you do? How'd you do, how'd you do, how'd you do? All right, we're gonna... Are there any other recommendations from the audience? Mine, uh, I, I let them watch the Filipino channel and they enjoy it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Patient, yeah, I have two patient Chinese and Hawaiian. They love mm -hmm. to watch the Filipino channel. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, that's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, Korean soap operas are very popular. <laughs> and I, I'm a big fan too, but you know, I'm Japanese, but I watch the Korean soap operas. Any of the Japanese, the Filipino, Korean, there yeah. it's wonderful exposure to different languages also. And the subtitles definitely help. <laughs> but yes. um, that's wonderful that they enjoy that with different yeah. ethnicities and cultures. It's great to ex have them be watching all different types of yes. programs. Do you um, I wanted to share something. Oh, um, with cognitive testing, um, see, cognitive is a very cognition is a very broad term for thinking abilities, and there's so many different levels from mild, mild to moderate severity levels. Um, it's it's very important, and I've been learning about kind of a, uh, individualizing cognitive activities because it's important to explain the purpose of visit. So um, with cognition, it's a pretty newer aspect of the speech language pathology, but it's definitely an area that we do evaluate and treat. But because of these tests that are sometimes harder, it's really important to maybe start off getting to know the patient before you know, testing them with something that might be difficult that they might not be as successful in because sometimes, you know, even we might have difficulty answering some of these more complex questions. So I think it's really important to help the patient feel successful and to feel smart and capable of, you know, answering questions successfully. And, and so talking about themselves and but even that, like personal information, it's it's very variable because people are very private, I found. And sometimes they might not want to disclose too much personal information. So that building of the trust and rapport is very key in approaching this area of cognition. Um, Do you usually pair it with... Um dancing or anything else Do that's you have, a great like... one <laughs> i i love dancing and songs and singing as well as dancing the rhythmic part it also helps with the stimulation of the brain to mouth um and and coming up with the words it could definitely be tapping uh counting you know using tapping and rhythm 
is very important. Japanese, they have the vowels, you know, the a, e, u, a, o, ka, ki, ku, ke, ko. So they do start with the vowels and then add consonants to each of those vowels. And that is a great mouth exercise. And so there's, you know, creative ways to bring out the words and the speech and the voice to help them to project in a fun manner. And so that's why the vocal affirmations are great because it helps them to build their self-esteem as well as project their voices and speak in a clear fashion. I am strong, I am incredible, you know, all positive things to build them up. And I, sometimes they say, I, I don't feel it at the moment, but the more you say it and put it out there, it will help them to build that confidence. <laughs> and so whatever they're comfortable with, um, keeping things positive, but dancing would be wonderful. Um, it helps the flow of the words and the, but the mouth to yeah. the brain to mouth connection is really important and rhythm, singing, dancing, you know, yeah, this is my patient. We used to dance every day, dance and singing. <laughs> oh, that's terrific! Wonderful. <laughs> Keep it up. She happy loves dancing to sing and dance. <laughs> oh, yes, happy dancing is a wonderful, wonderful yeah. therapy. <laughs> so I'm trying to yeah. explain. Yeah, if she heard something, she dancing. Yes, dancing. and sometimes if, if they can't and, speak as yeah. much. You yeah. know, dancing is a form of communication, body language, right? Again, yeah. um, the nonverbal is so important in bringing out their personalities and their voices. Yeah. So um, when we say to f our goal will be to try to help our clients find their voices, <laughs> even though it's inaudible, you can yeah. speak volumes with your body mm -hmm. and gestures and dancing yeah. singing <laughs> well singing <laughs> but even humming humming yeah. is great too yeah. <laughs> a good way of um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> explaining ourselves <laughs> instruments too musical instruments right tambourines bells <laughs> whistles guitar piano yeah. um, she can if still, if she can hear all those things yeah, so every day we play yes. the music <laughs> the the TV, mm -hmm. she loves to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And the auditory, the hearing is mm -hmm. the very, you know, it's, even though they can't speak, they can hear what you're saying. And that's mm -hmm. something to remember that although they might not be talking a lot, mm -hmm. important to that respect of they can hear you. And a mm -hmm. lot of times they can understand a lot of things and comprehend, <laughs> but... Yeah. They're stuck in their bodies, not being able to project that what they're yeah. verbalized, you know, to verbalize it. Mm -hmm. But so reading their body mm -hmm. language, yeah? Yeah. their facial expressions, are they sad, happy? Oh, yeah. it, it really helps the body language. And that's why that's such an important part of communication, the nonverbal also. It's picking hard. up on their cues. Okay, she would know. <laughs> I want to share that we have a study uh, that has the music, the dancing, the singing, and the rhythm going on in Hawaii. Do you all know that? Wow, that's terrific. Yeah, the John A. Burns School of Medicine got millions of dollars from NIH. And guess what we are studying? We are studying <laughs> hula to prevent dementia. Imagine that wow. we have a big research trial going on and there are many sites. Kokua Kalihi Valley is one site. They have a site on Kauai and they're looking to see how hula can prevent dementia. And I want to share when my parents were visiting from India, my mother has moderate dementia and she we enrolled her in a hula camp at the Manoa Heritage Center. And it's amazing to see. Uh, I have videos of my mother dancing, and, you know, in the hula camp, you're not only going to dance because hula will teach you the chanting. They will teach you to make kukui nut lays. <laughs> They're going to teach you so many things from memorization, mm -hmm. rhythm, uh, learning new words. 
So uh, I, I just want to share that with everybody. We got a big, big study with millions of dollars going on right now in Hawaii to see how hula can prevent, can slow dementia. That's beautiful. And the Hawaiian songs are wonderful. Yes, Dr. Fernandez. Yes, I, I want to agree. The Hawaiian sounds are wonderful because he, I even enrolled my father in that program. Now, my father has had a stroke and you will say, what is a stroke patient going to do? Hula? But wow. they, they were so nice to my dad. They told him, Jimmy, just think you are like King Kalakawa. You <laughs> wow. and, and my father, even as a stroke patient, enjoyed all of these things from learning a new song learning you know it, it requires a lot of memorization rhythm new words it, it, it involves different parts of the brain so people need to know that uh, in Hawaii we are very advanced <laughs> the John A. Burns School of Medicine has NIH funding to do an amazing research this is with their native Hawaiian division has got these funds to study hula and they have studied hula for diabetes before, and they have studied hula for uh, for hypertension also, and they have shown improvement. So remember, we got things in our own backyard. Wow! That's awesome. For sharing that, Dr. <laughs> that's cool. Anyone have any questions for Janice while we still have her on? No questions. Thank you, Janice. Learned a lot today. Thank you so much. To uh, meet with I'm really grateful to be here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, guys, don't forget to um, complete the evaluation. Um, evaluations are required for the CMEs. Uh, you can find the evaluations. Uh, the link was just posted in the chat um, or on the website or email. Yes. And so these are the questions on the evaluations. Our theme today, uh, and for the rest of the for the rest of for four for three more months is mentation, dementia, and depression. So how many of your residents have been screened for dementia or memory problems in the last year? How many of your residents have been screened for depression in the last year? How many of your residents had an emergency room visit or were hospitalized because of agitation or deli uh, delirium in the last year and to receive a to receive a certificate of attendance cme or ceu please fill out the evaluation click on the link in the chat or use the qr code on the last slide to enter the evaluation for a certificate of attendance, click the certificate of attendance choice near the bottom after you enter the evaluation. The certificate of attendance will go to your email and check your spam folder if you don't see it. The evaluation must be filled again for each person in your group. Thank you for your service, everyone. And here's the QR code. Yes. Thank you, Janice. That was a wonderful presentation. Thank you very much. It was wonderful to meet all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brittany, for being our moderator and for John uh, helping us out with our IT uh, technical difficulties. So thank you, John and Brittany. Thank you, guys.